Frank Gallo with you here. I am joined by Niagara University's head hockey coach, Jason Lammers. Jason, thank you for one, taking time out of your schedule to join us today. Well, it's great to be here. I, I love talking hockey and, and love talking about Niagara University and Purple Eagle hockey. So this is easy and fun. I, we haven't spoken since the end of February after what was a pretty memorable senior weekend against Robert Morris, which we'll get to in a moment. Uh, since then, the world's a little bit different. How are things um, for you? How's the family doing? Yeah, everybody's everybody's healthy in my circle, and uh, kids are doing great with school, and, and my wife's really the driver behind the academic side. And to be honest, not much has changed in, in my world from a kind of end of the season, what I would be doing right now and what our staff would be doing. We'd probably be on the road a little more but we're, we're just, we're crushing some video, you know, looking back on last year, what went well, what didn't go well, and then uh, trying to help our guys get better. And what have you had to change or kind of innovate to accomplish what you normally would be doing at the, as the calendar turns from April to May now? Yeah, so there a couple of things. With our team, we've had to change how we communicate. So we've, we've uh, all got up on technology here as we are now, and you know, I knew how to use Zoom before, but now I'm now I'm pretty good at it. So that that's uh, that's helped, and uh, that's number one. Number two is the is the physical part of trying to get our guys. This is a great time for them to get stronger and faster, right? So uh, and more mobile. So we've we've been sending them workouts and, and trying to help them with with basically some guys have a gym at home or, or use of a gym, right? Because we, we got guys from Sweden, and Sweden's not closed, and. Uh, then we've got guys that have absolutely nothing. So it's been a really interesting challenge that way and a lot of fun to try and come up with some ideas and, and kind of refreshing for our guys. And then this week the guys have started finals and uh, they're, they're crushing the finals and, and we're really excited to see what their GPA ends up being and we expect it to be right around the 3.64 that it was in the fall. I know your team takes a lot of pride in the educational side of their college experience and have you heard from them how this change of scenery or this change of lifestyle has been going academically? Yeah, well, it's, it's funny. They don't, uh, you know, they don't, they're college age kids. So they, we make them go to class. We expect them to be in class, probably a better way to say it. We trust them to be in class and, you know, they don't always want to go to class, right? Especially when it's rainy or whatnot, but now guess what? They all want to go to class and they all want to be around mm -hmm. each other and they're sick of being everything online. And uh, so, so that's certainly changed for them. Um, you know, I think the other part that's changed is we you kind of take for granted coaches and just the whole gathering and, and all encouraging each other and, and finding a way to help each other be better and boom, that ended, right? And now you're now you're on your own. So they miss the social piece of of uh what it means to be on a team this time of year. I know one change that happened in your schedule is the Atlantic Hockey Conference was supposed to take place in Florida. Uh, last week or two weeks ago, and that had to go virtual as well. How did that process go, and um, any big changes that we should be looking forward to? Yeah, so we're still doing it. So we have our last, our, I'm hopeful anyway, it's our last call here at 1 o'clock, uh, 1 and 2. We have Zoom calls today, and then I'm hopeful that we're done. Uh, I, I don't see a ton of changes. There's some things being discussed. This is a rules year in the league, so there's a lot of, a lot of good dialogue and passion for different rules, um, but I don't, I don't see a ton changing. How and did the, just so I can voice my, just sorry, just so I can voice my opinion on the rules. I wish we would, we would do like college football does where we kind of go uh, NHL light, you know, maybe, maybe there's a couple discrepancies that are a little different than the NHL, but I wish we would just follow the NHL model and all that we do. How did the new point system do you think worked out this past season with the three wins for regulation or uh first session overtime win. Was that discussed during the meetings? Yeah, that wasn't actually. I, I liked the idea of the three points. I just, I didn't like the way it was carried out on our, our league. I mean, trying to explain to people, my buddies, what place mm -hmm. we were in was really challenging. And, and, you know, the game that sticks out to me is the AIC. We went in a shootout, but they put it down as a tie and we put it down as a win. And Wait, wait a minute, we won, you know, so, so it's just, it's interesting how it played out and, and uh, I see that continuing the three point system, but uh, I think we need to do a better job of, of how we render it. Uh, taking a look at the season early on things uh, didn't go as well. I think as expected um, the first uh, eight or nine games 
uh, the lone win come in overtime against RIT. Can you describe what the atmosphere was around the team? Were they just kind of trying to uh, get their footing? Was maybe the preseason poll where you were finished to pick number two kind of looming large and following up the success of the postseason run the previous year? Yeah, 100%. Uh, the, the guys remembered the feeling, but they forgot the work that it took to get there. And, and I think as a staff, you know, we, we all forgot how we had to work and, and the commitment that was required both on and off the ice uh, to get there. So, so that was certainly part of it. Uh, the schedule was really challenging, and, and that's, that's on me, right, for, for the non-league games. And we set that schedule to be challenging on purpose. And as much as the start of the year was, was maybe challenging, I, I, didn't, I wasn't surprised, I guess I would tell you. And uh, our whole goal is to be the best team at the end of the year. So it's not how you start, as they always say, it's how you finish. And so the way we set our schedule up is to challenge ourselves before Christmas so that we can be the best team we can be at the end of the year. So all kind of on purpose. Wish, wish we would have been about 500 instead of 0 and 8 at one point. But um, I thought we learned and grew and, and actually were better because of what we went through. So you get to the Christmas break, you, you got a couple of wins, but um, like you said, the early season struggles were there. And one of those non-conference opponents was Penn State, your first weekend set coming out of the Christmas break and another big challenge. And you learn of an injury to the reigning freshman of the season, Ludwig Stenlin. Can you take us through what happened uh, with him and how you found out about the injury? Yeah, so we found out about it that it, was, it happened at AIC, the, the like December 14th game, actually the Friday game. And uh, it, it was kind of, uh, his hand was sore and it wasn't that big a deal. And, you know, it hurt him, obviously, but he was going to play through it. And it's credit to Ludwig and how he drives our team in terms of playing through injury. Not everybody is capable of doing that. And that's where our culture has really grown. But uh, he, he played through that and then got home to Sweden and it was still bothering him. And and uh, still swollen, and so we went to see the doctor, and in fact, it was, it was broken, and it's, it's like the real small uh, bone in your hand, so it, it connects a lot of parts and pieces, and so he, he was out, and uh, he called me. I was actually working on the power play, trying to figure out a way we could move him around and, and get him some good looks at the net, and I said, hey, I was just thinking about, you know, you know on the power play. He said, well, I'm not going to be on the power play. What are you talking about? So, so that was that was uh, interesting challenge as a coach. But to our guys' credit, some guys stepped up. You know, Ryan Cox, uh, Hiller, and, and Trust really really stepped up. I thought and filled a role for us, and and it actually ended up making us a really good team, and proved to a lot of people that we it's not it's not the star that you need. It's, it's let the system be the star. Would he have been available at any point during the Atlantic Hockey Tournament in his healing process? Had he had reached that point as of yet? Yeah, he was really close. We were we were hopeful that he was going to play in the Army games. Uh, we actually brought him on the trip, hopeful that he could he could make it. I I don't in the end I don't know that he would have played in the Army games, but I, I think he would have had a real good chance uh, in the in the in the quarterfinal or I guess the semifinals back here in the Harbor Center. So going back to that Penn State weekend, you learned that your top center's out and you're kind of shuffling things. And a lot of guys point to that weekend as a little bit of a turning point where they regain their confidence. What about that weekend was significant for your season? Yeah, well, I, I thought we played outstanding. Like we, I, you know, you're, you're watching it, you're calling it. So I, I thought we played well enough to win and, and probably could have, should have won that game. Uh, but didn't and but our guys were so connected and played so hard for each other that I really thought that sparked us and showed them Penn State's a good team right and, and showed them that they should believe in themselves and they can have confidence and and we're going to get to get this done so I thought it was great that way and, and that's what I would say the confidence that came out of that weekend was, was what really started to turn things the right way for us. Yeah, the results kind of started coming through late January, starting with a sweep of Army on home ice. And you really had a lot of success in Dwyer Arena this year at home. Can you explain the pride that's taken about defending that home ice? Yeah, well, Bob Dwyer is, is, a, is a loyal supporter, and, and we talk about it a lot that, you know, we, hey, this, this gentleman is an NU grad, and you're going to be special because you graduate from Niagara, too. And he built this place, and, and we need to do him one. You know, we need to – 
we need to represent them. So we talk about it a lot. We talk about being really good at home to, to help yourself in the future, right? To set yourself up moving forward. Uh, so it's really important to us. You know, a lot of families are in the stands too. So the guys like playing in front of, in front of friends and family. And, and uh, I, I really, really think being good at home is important, especially in college hockey. So you talked about how the, it became more of a team. You had more contributions. John Hill moves to Ford uh, and contributes offensively, which you hadn't seen. And you had mentioned Ryan Cox down the middle. Um, so a few players I wanted to single out that we can discuss. First off, one of your seniors, Ben Soke, uh, always showed offensive promise, but he really found the consistency in his game down the stretch, putting up multiple points a game. Can you talk about how you saw him take his game to the next level? Yeah, so I, I really think Ben ended up as one of the best players in the league, if, if not the best player. And uh, he, he, was, he was humming. And a large credit goes to Noah Delmas. I know him and Noah had a conversation, and that's where we talk all the time about, you know, players coaching players. And I, I thought Noah did a great job helping, helping Ben believe in himself. And, and Ben's a really good player. He just he needed a little more – belief in himself and, and Noah did a great job with that and and you saw it and you talked about it once he started to believe in himself he really took off but we're disappointed that the season ended because he was on fire and uh he's certainly be going to be a guy that we miss down the road and and uh, we're excited for what the future holds for him because I I talked to a couple pro teams and I told him he, he's still young like he could still be a sophomore on our team because he came in as a true freshman so uh he, he's still got a lot of growth in his game Speaking of, speaking of pro teams, you had Ryan Cook, who may have had some aspirations of turning pro, obviously Noah Dalmas, who we'll talk about. Has that been kind of thrown off due to the current situation, them maybe be able to sign some pro contracts? Yeah, the, the, uh, it slowed everything down for sure, because a lot of teams aren't sure what's, what's going to happen or where to go or what their budget's going to be. And, and so that slowed a lot of that down. And, and I think you'll see at some point here, uh, you'll see our guys sign and, and go on and play pro hockey. It, it's just the timing's not real good right now, obviously, with everything that's going on, unfortunately for them. Ryan Cook was the next person I wanted to ask you, be, you about because down the stretch he was really playing some of his best hockey, and it came after a healthy scratch that occurred on the road. Um, what did you see about Ryan's game that kind of switched after the, that um, game that he had to sit out? Yeah, I, I just just thought he was he was him. He he just he he played how how good he is, and we've talked to him a lot about we really believed in his game and what he was, and he just got away from what makes him good. He's a big, strong, sturdy, hard, competitive player, and uh, before the scratch, we just didn't we didn't feel like he was he was playing that way, and uh, we thought it was really clear in, in the game against Sacred Heart the first night and. Credit to him, it, you know, he, he responded. And, and that's what you're looking for in those situations. You, I think what we're trying to help the guys realize is we're just trying to help them be the best version of themselves. Uh, but we need them to help realize what they are, too. And, and he got back to who he was, and it's a credit to him. And we're still, we're still real close and send each other texts and calls uh, up until this point and have some fun with it. That's great to hear. The other senior, obviously, your departing captain, Noah Delmas. Um, you already mentioned different ways he contributes off the ice. Um, so many things behind the scene. You've also credited that he's a better person than possibly a hockey player because of what he brings. One thing I wanted to ask you about on ice, have you seen a defenseman as good at keeping the puck in at the blue line when he decides to hold that line than Noah Delmas? Yeah, no, he's, he's got a threshold that he's not, uh, he's not stressed up there. Right. And that's, I think that's really important for uh, being real, real good. And, and so he's, he's got a high, high threshold for that. And that's going to serve him very well, especially the way the game's changing and, and what you expect out of defensemen uh, in this day and age. Part of the turnaround was shuffling that back end. You separated Noah from his defensive partner, Chris Harper, and it seemed to kind of free him up a little bit on the ice as both of their games kind of evolved. What did you see in his game as the season progressed? 
Yeah, well, I, I thought Noah put uh, incredible pressure on himself. And it's funny that you talk about that, that uh, splitting those guys up. But I, I thought both their games grew. And obviously, that's what we were looking for as, as coaches, is we wanted to see them really thrive. So specifically for Noah, he, he, he seemed to relax and just play his game. And I thought that was, that was the most important part for him is he just, he kind of shed the pressure that he put himself under all self-induced. Right. But, uh, and just got real comfortable being a real good leader for us. Uh, when you talked about the team more than the star, one line that kind of embodied that was John Hill, Ryan Cox and Alex Truscott, they just, you look at that line on paper and you think, well, they shouldn't do too much offensively, but they're able to contribute. They did penalty killing. Can you talk about that trio as a unit? Yeah. So we, we love them. Like they're, they're, uh, I thought that was one of the things that turned our season around as well is when that line came together. And I want to say it was air force weekend, but they, they just, they're very honest players. They're very committed to what we do. Uh, they live, they live being an uncommon guy on the ice and off the ice and as a person. And uh, you really saw that play out in the game. And then they kind of set the gold standard for the expectation as a team that we expect you to play. And so now everybody held to that standard really helped, I thought, ignite us into, into where we got to. There was a little bit of a bump in the road. You get, you go to uh, Sacred Heart, you're trying to take on one of the best teams in the conference and you end up losing six, nothing. And, I, I remember the post game. I was going to commercial, and I said, "Oh, don't go too long. He's coming straight up here." Uh, it was a tough loss, but the next night you come back on their senior night and win six to one. What 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 happened with the team? Was there anything that was point, talked about or pointed to that twenty four hours later you guys kind of put the thumping back on them? Yeah, we we were we were disappointed in the uh, the effort. You know, some of that. It, I'll keep internally in the dressing room. I, I own some of that too, right? I'm, I'm, the, I'm the coach, I'm the leader. And so I certainly take some credit for that loss on, on Friday night. But uh, again, a credit to our guys. We've said it since in my time here, they've just been so resilient. And uh, that was another real turning point, I thought, that just showed our guys what we can be. Because Sacred Heart's a real good team or was a real good team at that point. And uh, we, we, we played real well that night and, and it just showed what we can do when we play our game. And the week, the season really seemed to pick up momentum there. And, uh, you're able to utilize Chad Veltri in the net a lot during the stretch. Can you talk about what you saw from Chad in the first half of the season? And then the second half where he was kind of leaned on a lot more. Yeah, so Chad, Chad, actually, you know, he, he didn't have a win before Christmas. So credit to him and, and what he accomplished in the second half, but excuse me. I mean, you saw the games. He, he deserved to win those games <laughs> for whatever reason. He, he played great, but we didn't score enough. Or, um, we, we just didn't have it that night, right? So real credit for him sticking with what he is. I, I thought he just got better and better as the year went on. Uh, he, he's really calm. He's really confident. His work just continued to get better and better, especially I thought as he started to see the results of the work he was putting in. And uh, he was a real factor, a difference maker for us down, down the stretch. I know during one of the pregames, I asked you about a rivalry with RIT and you said, no, the, there's a lot of differences between those two schools, but it seemed between the end of last year with you guys knocking them out in the semifinals and the four games that you two, those two teams played, it was just, fantastic hockey so much excitement and I was really hoping maybe they the pass would cross again in the Atlantic Hockey Tournament can you talk about that second weekend though the home and home where the second game doesn't go your way but the way you were played and the intensity really prepared you guys for the final home stretch yeah it sure did and, and that's even uh, uh, their staff said to us hey you guys are playing great hockey right and we 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 uh I thought our effort on that night that we lost was incredible. Uh, you know, probably some, some calls that, that not necessarily went against us. I thought we put ourselves in a little bit of a bad spot there, but the guys were competing. So you'll take hard penalties. It's just can't pile them up on top of each other like that. So uh, I thought that was another game that the guys showed how, how good we were, right? And, and uh, on the road and an emotion-packed building, and it was humming and 
uh, I, I love playing with those guys a little bit, right? That, that uh, they always ask about the rivalry and no, it's, it's really with team South of the bridge. So it's just kind of fun, fun for me to poke a little fun at them on mm -hmm. that. One thing that might have not gone your way is looking at the end of the Mercyhurst game where you were five on three for a while and had to kill off a succession of penalties. Earlier in the year, your penalty kill and power play might have let you down there, but in the second half of the year, it really kind of turned around. You were using different looks with defensemen taking uh, face-offs. Can you talk about the work your assistant coaches did, uh, Andy Bichetta and uh, uh, Matt Nicholson, on what they did with the uh, special teams throughout the year? Yeah, so impressed with those guys and the support that they provide provide our players and, and to me too. So uh, they, they did a great job with that. It was something we wanted to experiment with and, and uh, you know, we, we did and, and it, some of it worked and some of it didn't. But that, that 35 PK against Mercyhurst, I mean, you're hitting on some great points here because that was another turning point that, that we were able to finish that game out. And I thought that was a big deal. And I can specifically remember the, the effort by Chris Harper to get us a goal there in that situation. And uh, really, really a, a gutsy effort by our guys on the road. Yeah. And so it takes us to the Robert Morris weekend, the final uh, regular season set where you guys need a weekend sweep to try to give yourself a chance at the bye. And back-to-back -back nights you score four goals in the second period can you just talk about that weekend as a whole and what it meant to the team and as a program because I know Saturday night I stuck around the rink it just it felt like one of those nights that were extra special that you didn't kind of want to leave the job because you wanted to hang on to that feeling yeah no it was it was uh it was awesome uh, I uh I thought Friday night might have been one of our most convincing wins of the year. We were we were on it. We were on top of them. They didn't have a they didn't have a prayer, and uh, they've got a real good goalie, right? So uh, both both guys. So uh, I thought it was I thought it was awesome, but especially Friday and then Saturday. You know they're going to come out like a pack of hornets, and I thought our guys answered the bell and found a way. And like I said, their goalie was real good and. I just thought our transition game was up to the task and, and we competed and it's hard to close the team out on back-to-back -back nights and, and the guys did it and uh, earned us, earned us a, a buy and the first time in the program's history in a long time. And uh, it was just neat to see how our seniors, well, everything they'd been through uh, and to see how they had helped create the culture and the expectation, the behaviors that we want and the legacy now that they've left that, you know, the expectation is you're going to, you're going to finish high in this league. Can you tell about how that kind of built from last season? You wanted a home playoff series, which you ended up winning against Canisius in three games. And now the following year you have a slow start, but you come up and you get a buy into the Atlantic hockey playoffs. Can you talk about how that leadership kind of picked up from where the previous regime left off with uh, Nick Farmer and Johnny Curran and players like that? Yeah, well, those two guys specifically uh, were, were great for us. I thought that whole senior class was was great. Nico uh, had a heck of a senior year. Joey O'Brien's one of the most special people I've ever been around. So incredible, incredible group that really helped build a foundation here for springboarding us into the future. And uh, They did a lot of the heavy lifting, and then th this year's group certainly continued it and, and took over with it. I thought, uh, you know, Noah did a great job living up to what the expectations are now here at the program. So with that buy and um, you're getting prepared to take Army on, you already know your opponent. Uh, did you utilize that week to kind of watch the uh, opening round of Atlantic hockey or how did you utilize that first week? Yeah, so so we we uh, we really rested the guys. We kind of gave them some time off and, and uh, we, we went back and forth on on you know how much to do it and, and so we asked the guys and to the guys credit they, they told us the days they wanted to skate and the days they needed off and felt they uh, should have off and, and so that's what we did so we were we were excited to have that week off and and really rest and, and regroup and to your point earlier about Stenland we thought that would help us get Stenland back but obviously it didn't turn out that way and uh, we thought we were in real good shape headed into the Army series. Yeah, so that next week is kind of when things start to erode a little bit. I know you guys left for West Point a little bit early. I was set to join you later in the week. Can you talk about how things kind of moved and it was fluid from 
what you were planning on seeing to the 24 hours later, maybe you're playing with no fans in the arena and to eventually the cancellation. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it's one of the hardest things I've been through just to take a step backwards to get, we were getting ready to get on the ice for practice and, uh, they, they told us, hey, turn around and come home. So we called the seniors aside and said first and just said, hey, here's what's up. We want to give you a few minutes to, to get your head wrapped around it. So with the end in mind, that's, that's how it kind of ended. And then in a rather uh, uninteresting fashion, we packed up our stuff and got on the bus and returned back to Dwyer Arena. So uh, on, on the way down there, you know, we kind of heard about it and you were like, what is this? And uh, okay but nobody really knew what it was but by the time we were coming back it was it was a little bit uncomfortable and a little bit scary even I would say and so like you said we went from hey we're playing to hey we're playing to hey we're playing to hey we're not gonna have fans now okay to hey we're just gonna have the people that are on the, the ticket list to turn around and come home so one of the craziest things I've ever been through fascinating uh just hope everybody's doing well that that's in our fan base and uh feel bad for the seniors and all the seniors whether they're in high school or college right that that had their seasons cut short can you remember a more difficult conversation as a coach that you had to have with players than the one that you had with the seniors letting them know that their season has had been cut short yeah no <laughs> that was uh, uh that, that was a tough one just to see how that unfolded for them and, and to see the tears in their eyes and you know I, to your point the, the questions that you've asked already there was a real belief in our room that that we we were going to do what we did last year plus one and so we really had a plus one mentality and and uh, we're excited we knew the army series was going to be hard right because just when you play an academy team they're never going to quit but we were very comfortable we were very confident and we had a lot of internal belief how was the news broken to the rest of the team? Did you allow your players to do that, or was that led, led by you? Was it done on the bus ride home, or? Yeah, we 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 uh, we actually asked the seniors to do it, just so that I think it's important that the hockey's a game of emotion, and life has a lot of emotion in it, and we wanted to see the guys to see what type of emotion this stirred in the seniors, because uh, they're going to be there too, those other guys, right? So. Real important for us to have that happen, and, and uh, guys did a great job. Short and sweet, but effective. And as you mentioned, I know uh, part of the rough part of this is I last saw you guys end of February. I was doing a radio interview, hopefully to preview the game, and we found out Friday morning that was – or Thursday, and I appeared on Friday that it was canceled. And you kind of just absorbed it, and I think now we're at the end of April and we're finally reconnecting. I think it took a good two months, and I'm not even part of the team to kind of like, oh, that one was ripped away. So how are you – has that sunk in with you yet, or how long did that kind of take? Like, oh, that opportunity was right in front of us, as you kind of mentioned, that plus one. Yeah, it was really hard. It, it was really hard. It still is hard. I was I was up at Dark 30 today thinking about it, and, and uh, it just kind of sticks in your craw a little bit. So – yeah, it's still hard and, and still working through it, but but at the same time trying to work to move on and, and uh, look into the future, I guess, now, because now we're kind of in what would be the postseason anyway, and, and right now what's going on isn't too dissimilar to what our postseason process would be like as as a staff, because our guys are, are you know, home and, and had, would have just been finishing up finals, and there's not much that we're allowed to do with them per the NCAA rules now anyway. Uh, so here we are back to kind of what we're used to, I guess. One more question surrounding that cancellation during uh senior weekend, uh, yourself, Noah Delmas even mentioned that the group is very tight. They, they share laughs, they share tears before the senior weekend as a group and that kind of close knit camaraderie, did that kind of, did you guys lean on each other during that difficult time? Did that uh, kind of make it easier that you could do that as a group? Yeah, no, that's the, that's the fun part of it, you know, and then the guys now, they had a short, pretty short memory. I mean, the bus ride home and we had some laughs and chuckles and uh, kind of anticlimactic laughing, you know, but, but uh, it was what it was, but that, that's, that's the hardest part. I think the, 
that that team will never be together again, right? And and to just have kind of no closure on it is is what I guess I find the most challenging because they were had come so far and had put in so much work. Now they were remembering the work that was needed, and they were about to have a real special feeling too. Any other final thoughts or anything on the this past season before we kind of take a peek ahead to next year? Yeah, no, just like I said, love, love our staff, love love the 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 guys too, like yourself that don't always uh, they're kind of seen but not heard. You know, Scotty Master Batista is a trainer, and and Brian Allen is our equipment guy, and um, Weeds strength coach, and and Sydney back there working for our guys, and and Steve Butler and Simon Gray, and all all the people that support us, uh, Keith Sargent on campus, all those people that support us and uh, just appreciate everything they do. Some of the younger players on your roster next year might need a more significant role with Noah Delmas and Cook moving on, especially on the back end. You have someone like Jordan Wishman. Um, and um, how did you see his game kind of elevate? And do you think he's ready to take on that next step in his junior year? Yeah, he's he's a guy I know he wants to. He, him and I have talked about it a little bit, and he really wants to take a step in his game. Uh, he's a real good skater. He, he can really shut people down. He, he's, he's, uh, he's got a real competitive streak in him, right? He, he's got good abilities. He, he wants to keep working on his puck touches and, and being real good at moving pucks. And uh, if there's anything that Jordan does, he works. And he'll work. He'll work. He's kind of like Will Smith. You know, if you get on the treadmill with Jordan Wishman, you're getting off first. He's, he's going to outcompete you. So uh, excited to see him take steps in his game. A lot of different players got some valuable minutes. Um, Pinio steps up and down the middle after coming off an injury early on. Do you think the playing experience that he got in the second half of the year will really translate going into next year? Yeah, we're really excited about Jason. He 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 obviously had the knee injury, and and he's even a better skater than he showed. He didn't have, you know, he didn't he wasn't back to 100 percent where he wants to be. So th that experience, though. I think will be very impactful for him and help him grow. Uh, we're expecting him to be really good on the dot, win draws, be super competitive, uh, really win puck battles and races. And he's got a he's got a nasty shot too. So we're really excited to see his game elevate, especially with a summer of work. You know, now I've talked to him. He doesn't have the perfect gym set up, but a summer of work where last year all he could do is eat Doritos on the couch. So. Uh, now he's able to put the work in. So I think you'll see an uptick in his game. We're going to see a lot of new faces. One was a transfer that didn't end up coming in just because of some rules with Walker Summer. You have the transfer and Croy Evanson, who's a big defenseman. Um, can you talk about some of those guys that will uh, kind of be hitting the lineup next year? Yeah, so so Walker, starting up front, Walker is uh, similar to Eric Cooley in his speed and similar to Eric Cooley in his size, right? So, and similar to Eric with a, with a good shot. So Walker scored nine goals at the Air Force Academy. So anytime you can inject nine goals into your lineup, to me, that's a big deal because our kind of our gold standard is 10. If you get 10 goals in a year, that, that's, a, that's a heck of a year with only 34 games. So, so we're excited to inject that. More importantly, uh, he's a real good student and, and does real, real well as, as a student. And then most importantly, he's a great person. He's got awesome energy. He's got a real vibe to him. He's always in a good mood. He brings the juice. He's always snapping his fingers. He's ready to go. He loves hockey. So, so we're excited to see that play out. Uh, Croy Evanson is a Winnipeg Jets draft pick. And, you know, he's taller than I am. So I have to look up to him on the ice. And I don't know that I've had to do that very often. In my uh -huh. career. It's kind of fun. And so we're excited to see his attribute, attributes play out. Big guy, uh, skates fairly well, can really move pucks when he's on his game. You know, I think he's got a chance to be one of the better defensemen in, in our league. And, and uh, we're excited. He works so hard and maintains such a great attitude, both those guys, through sitting out a year, which is a lot harder than it sounds. And if you talk about the situation in between the pipes, you're really going into a year where there's a lot of talent uh, there with Brian Wilson entering his senior year, uh, Chad Beltrier, who we already talked about, and you have an incoming uh, commit that uh, looks very promising as well. Yeah, no, we're excited about those guys. We, we've had a lot of good talks with the three of them. And, uh, you know, Patrick is a freshman. He's, he's going to learn and grow. And he's got two really good people in front of him. 
that really set a standard for excellence and, and how we want to how we want to work. You know, Wils Wils is uh, obviously took us to the final game last year and now into his senior year. I know he's got high expectations of himself, and so ours are equally as high. And we just want to support him in what what he wants to do and how good he wants to be. That's our job as a coach to support those guys. And uh, you know, I think Chad is just scratching the surface on what he's going to be because. He, he, he changed his body. Uh, he changed his, his work and practice. Um, he helped his technique got better with, with how he plays and what he wants to do. So we're excited to see all three guys grow. And, and, and we really think we've got a, a good trio back there, like you said. A lot of players making the jump from their junior to senior year next year. I, I mean, you already talked about Cooley and Justin Kendall, Jared Brandt, uh, Mr. Harper on the back end. So uh, a lot of leadership on this team. Do who do you see as really Jack Billings is even uh, him as well? Uh, how do you see that kind of nucleus working out next year? Yeah, we're, we're really encouraging the seniors to to now leave a legacy, and they've seen a couple classes come through, and the legacy that each class has left. And I think each year they like Lego blocks. We've been able to build on that as a team, and and now it's their job to kind of hopefully put the roof on this thing. Like, I feel like we've laid the foundation. I feel like the walls are up, right? And now, now we need to put the roof on. And so it's going to be up to these seniors to put the roof on this. And uh, we're super excited. Who's going to emerge as, as the captain? I mean, I have my thoughts on that. And who's going to wear an A? I have my thoughts on that too. But I really want to see how it plays out uh, from a team perspective and, and through summer class. Hopefully we get back and get everybody back for summer school and uh, if not, it'll play out through training camp in the fall. Yeah, you kind of stole my question there. I was say, any uh, any spoilers you want to drop here in terms of who might be wearing letters? But I know you have a deep pool to consider this year. Yeah, we we really do. And and you know, one thing that we really try and work on with the guys, and and it's not easy, but uh, is helping empower them. That you, first, you need to lead yourself, and then you can lead others, right? And leadership is not a title it's, it's just action. And, and, uh, anybody can lead, anybody can lead. You don't have to be the president or the CEO to lead the, the, the guy in the mail room and the guy sweeping the floor. Those guys can be leaders and culture builders too. Uh, the way I like to equate it is kind of Southwest airlines. If you've ever been on there, uh, their culture is different, right? When they do their announcements and they kind of have fun with it. So that that's where we're looking for all the guys to first lead themselves, but then, Leadership is going to appear in opportunities in different places. We, we want you to step up and, and lead. So if you always need a title, uh, we don't want to hurt the guys that way, that they feel like everybody needs a title. At the same time, if you don't give any titles, then they feel like they don't have a leader. So it's an interesting balance that, that we're working through this year and certainly talking to the guys about and talking as a staff. And I know there's a lot of freshmen incoming, but one player that I want to single out real quick, um, Ryan Domofsky, uh played center. Not not the prototypical size of that maybe pro teams look at, but he he just seems to be able to fit into any situation. Uh, had a strong year this past year. Where where do you see where his game can take him in the future? Well, I equate him, and people in Buffalo would understand this. He's he's our Patrick Kane, right? Like he's he he's that creative. He's that nifty. If you haven't had the chance to watch him play, come see him. I think he'll play for a long time. And one of the reasons I think he'll play for a long time is because he loves hockey. Like he, he, he just, he eats it, he breathes it, he sleeps it, uh, you know, uh, kind of funny here, but he probably sleeps with his hockey stick still. Like he, 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 he just, he loves the game and there's nothing better. That's what gets us out of bed as a staff is we love working with him and with guys like that because they just want to get better. They're so passionate about it. So his desire is what separates him and, and just excited to see him as, as he too this summer, now he knows a little more education about how to eat and how to move and how to sleep uh, and, and his mental game. I think you're going to see another step out of him. I, I think similar to Chad, he's just kind of scratching the surface of what he will be. Do you, do you think that embodiment of the game really shows up on the hockey IQ side on the ice? He seems to be able to see where the play is progressing before some other players might have. Yeah, a hundred percent. He's, he's watched so much hockey. I mean, God bless him. He's sending me video of, of things, you know, so it's just, it's so awesome to see a guy like that, that, that wants more and, and is always asking for more coach. Can we talk about this? Or, Hey, I saw this. Hey, how about this idea? And, 
I think you'd, be, you'd probably be surprised how many of the guys and the players' ideas that we implement, and they work. And, and we talked about players coaching players, and that's a place where, you know, the players are coaching the coaches. And, and we certainly as coaches want to coach the players, but I think it's real important that the players coach the coaches too because they're the ones that play the game. I know I'm very excited to see how things turn out in the next year. Is the hope now that you'll be starting on time in October, or is that still – kind of being worked out do you think oh that, that's my hope i mean I, I heard the other day from a good source that the nhl is going to play again this year and they're going to start up june one and and have a little training camp and then play so i think as 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 that starts to happen uh, and and leagues start to go i you know i heard baseball is going to have they're going to divide into what three ten division teams and and so as these teams start to go and these leagues start to go i think that's real encouraging for the ncaa the most important part for the NCAA is the football season, right? If, if football is going to play, then everything else is going to play. Yeah, that's a real revenue driver. I, I didn't have this on the docket, but since we brought up the football season and um, NCAA um, agreeing to pain of student athletes for their likeness and things like that, is that anything that you had put thought into and in how that system could work out for the betterment of uh, if college athletics in general? Yeah, you know, it's something that I, I don't have a lot of uh, experience with and, and haven't put a lot of thought into it. I, I, uh, I, what a great opportunity for the young people, which is, is pretty neat, right? But uh, I, I, I really can't answer that intelligently. I just haven't thought too much about it. I think hockey's the, probably the least of their concerns. They're more focused on basketball and football, but, but uh, what a neat opportunity. And as we close things up, I ask you any message for the Purple Eagle fans out there um, for this past season and what we have look, to look forward to next year. Yeah, just again, I appreciate everybody's support. We love you. It's our, we realize what an honor it is to play in front of you. We, 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 we want to exceed your expectations. And that's what we put out to our guys. The people are paying money to come watch you play. You need to exceed their expectations so they'll come back. And uh, we just really want to see Dwyer Arena get packed, and like you mentioned at, at the end of the last game, imagine if there was 2,500 people in there and the, the building was shaking a little bit. Right now we got a band, and, and uh, I hear there might be some beer coming. So it's, it's a lively environment, and, and we'd love to have you there. Thanks for coming, and next time bring somebody with you. Well, Coach, uh, again, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to have this interview, have a chat with, uh, get some information out to the fans. Uh, Appreciate your time and work that you put in. Frank, thank you so much for, for caring about our program and all the work you do behind the scenes. And uh, it was really fun with you this year and, and look forward to getting back at it next year. Sounds good. Again, uh, it seems appropriate to say stay safe, but we'll close it out with Go Purple Eagles. Love it. Love it. Be uncommon. Have a, <laughs> have a good one, Coach. Thank you again. Thank you. Bye-bye.